Hey guys, welcome back to another video, Peter here. Today's video is a remake of my Fuang Dang video. I wanted to clear a few things up because while I was away, another reviewer did a review and it sparked a little bit of a debate in the comments. There's a little bit of drama uh, just because two people have complete polar opposite opinions. Um, and I wanna clear a few points up that were raised, uh, some comments that I've read, but yeah, we'll, we'll clear things up. I'll give a better perspective now after some time has passed. I was genuinely angry at the time. It actually uh, upset me to the point where I used bad language, which I don't often do, but it wound me up at the time because I'd smelled so many really ridiculously priced frag fragrances like the, the new Clive Christian line Addictive Arts, which are obscenely priced. And it winds me up because I know the industry as a whole is very disingenuine. People lie, there's false advertising, that's commonplace. Um, I feel like people get ripped off and that uh, was a genuine reaction at the time of these kind of feelings. So I'm gonna do the video with a, a cool level head and address everything again in a better way, hopefully. So the story behind the video, as someone asked, what what's, there's a story there, like uh, there was in, with an innuendo that basically uh, there was some kind of secret hidden agenda for my reason for giving a negative review to this house. There is no negative agenda apart from what I've just said. Basically the, the story behind it was that I was in Las Vegas with Timmy and we went to Barney's and Timmy showed me this line. Timmy had already smelt it he was of a similar opinion to me that they were ridiculously overpriced and that they didn't smell like amazing. So, but I didn't know anything about them. He said, oh, smell these, what do you think? So I smelled them. They then asked me to guess the price. In fact, I'll put the clip in right now. You can watch exactly what I said and my genuine first reaction to the fragrances. We're gonna keep going with the day. And now we're at Barney's. Um, smell that one, that one. Blew me away how expensive they are. You think they're expensive? Super. No. Before you look, guess the price, bro. 50 mil. 50 mil. For, fi for, for 50 mil, how much they cost? If it's more than $120, I would <laughs> I would not be impressed. Oh, you can show them. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm being generous there when I say $120. Fuck mm. no. <laughs> they're super synthetic. You're not paying for the quality of juice, sir. That, I, I recognize it's super synthetic. They're not natural at all. So we're back at the car. We just put all of our... So as you can see from the clip, I guessed $120. When they told me the actual price, I was pretty gobsmacked. And I was like, wow, really? I, I, I genuinely did not smell the, the quality, the perceived level of quality f for them was not matched to my opinion. I'm not a holy grail. I'm not infallible. I, I am capable of being wrong, but that is my genuine and still is my genuine response that I didn't feel the correlation of the price what I was smelling didn't seem to match to me. But I in actively encourage people not to waste their money on this brand because that's how I felt. I fe felt people were going to be spending a lot of money and kind of being disappointed. Obviously, someone else has come along and done a different review with a completely polar opposite opinion that they really like the fragrances. There's actually two reviewers that have reviewed them very positively. So obviously, uh, opinions are different and that's something I didn't cover in my original video that you know other people might like them <laughs> so I want to address that now just because I don't like them and I wasn't impressed with them you might like them so instead of saying don't go out and try them I actively encourage other reviewers and everyone else to try them and make up your own mind if you think they are worth four hundred three hundred dollars a bottle I'll leave that up to you. You can decide with your own logic and your own brain and your own sense of smell whether you not, you know, you think they smell good and whether or not that smell justifies the price. That's up to you. But I want to address a specific point that um, was brought up in the comments that I kept reading. But basically, my review would not have been uh, as harsh. I, I, you know, I would have been completely different if the price had been lower, if the price had been more to what my perceived level of quality was, you know, in the region of 120 kind of dollars a bottle, the review would have been completely different. They still weren't my taste. I still didn't think they were that amazing. 
there was still nothing that I would personally buy or recommend or be that excited about. I thought they were kind of, eh, to be honest, that still stands. But if the price had been, you know, reasonable to, to what I thought of the quality and the way they smelled, the review would have been fine. You know, you get what you pay for. What rubbed me up the wrong way was at the really high level of price and the way they market themselves as using really high quantities of really rare, precious raw materials. Saying that they use very big quantities of raw, precious, natural ingredients, which obviously then is meant to justify the high price. They very well could use raw natural materials, but the way it comes across doesn't really smell that way. But I will stress the importance of testing them for yourself and making up your own mind. But I also want to cover the, the fact that it is okay for people to have different opinions and to not attack anybody, don't make drama, don't think. What, what grates my cheese a little bit is that um, negative reviews tend to seem to have this opinion to people that they're more valid or you know a negative review must be real and if someone gives it a positive re review there must be something fishy going on or they're not trustworthy or that that is somehow not as valid. And I think that's rubbish. People have very different tastes, very different senses, judging things in a different way. Some, some people might not even take the price into consideration. They might just be describing the smell without giving really a second thought to the price. I don't know people's way of methods of judging something. Um, but it is okay to think that they smell good. And it is okay to think that, yeah, I'm happy to pay $400 a bottle for that. There's nothing wrong with that. It doesn't make the person doing a positive review any less valid. It doesn't mean they're a liar. It doesn't mean that there's something wrong with someone's taste. It's just a, a personal thing. You either like how it smells or you don't. Um, there's no there's no one that's right or wrong. So take, you know, what I'm saying is don't put too much weight and credence on reviewers. It is, at the end of the day, a personal opinion and no one is right or wrong. And I see that quite often where a negative review uh, seems to be given more credence than a positive one. It's a bizarre kind of mentality that negativity is more accurate and valid than positivity. Let's put things into perspective here, that if you know there's a positive review and a negative review, they're equally as valid. Nobody is wrong. For sake of the video, we're gonna do another first impressions of the three samples that I did get. You'll have to excuse me, I will hold my laptop for this. So this is called The Calling with top notes of aldehyde, bergamot, mandarin, red pepper, tea leaves, ginger, heart notes of jasmine, lily, imaginary white flowers, amber and sandalwood. Now, I think it smells okay. I mean, I didn't say these smelled like trash in my first video, uh, which some people seem to think I did. My, my complaint wasn't the, the smell. They don't smell completely terrible. They're just not wow kind of fragrances. They don't do much for me personally. I just don't see um, them being this expensive. So this one, God, it's faint. Um, I mean, you get some kind of light flowers and you get a little bit of the ginger. It's an ever so slightly sweet, pale light, white floral, a tiny bit of ginger. It's very light and airy. You get a little bit of the lily kind of vibe. Lily in perfume is always synthetic because you can get genuine real lily oil, um, but it is incredibly expensive. Literally thousands and thousands of dollars for small amounts. Um, so nobody uses real lily, it's always a synthetic accord of lily. Just to put that into perspective here, that no one thinks that it uses real lily, I highly doubt that it does. And the term that they coined as imaginary white flowers, as in it's not real. Doesn't smell bad, it's very, very light. It is a mildly sweet, airy kind of floral that I really, my genuine honest opinion is this could quite easily be a designer fragrance or at the most kind of an indie level fragrance. The way that it smells, I mean. Um, and even then I don't think it would get much attention. It wouldn't get much hype or talk really. It's very blase. It's definitely more feminine. But really, it's not something to get excited about, personally. I mean, test it for yourself, obviously, but it really doesn't do a whole lot for me. And I honestly just don't see the value in it. So the next one was called Raw Secret. Let me get my laptop again. So this one contains lavender, cumin, cardamom, pink pepper, 
Cypress Green Mango Rum Saffron Cinnamon Carnation Clary Sage Gayak Wood Blended Tobacco Cedarwood Sandalwood Musk Vanilla Caramel Chocolate Labdanum Papyrus It's light, it's fresh, it's clean I get quite a lot of musk um, Hard to describe That note breakdown is not an accurate reflection of how this is going to smell Again, I've got to be, you know, real here I think most people that smell that aren't going to be that excited. Again, personal opinion, obviously, personal taste. Um, taste is subjective. I just can't see someone that has a good experience with perfume being that flawed with this. It's very kind of non-descriptive, not very interesting. Hard to describe because really nothing jumps out as, I mean, I don't, smell any rum, I don't smell green mango, I don't really smell cumin or lavender or any of these notes, cinnamon, carnation, clary sage, kayak wood. I mean there's sprinklings of other things but it really, it does not come across like the note breakdown would suggest, put it that way. This is very hard to describe because there's really not much there to smell apart from a vague kind of muskiness. I mean, it's pretty dull. I mean, I actively encourage, go out and smell that in a shop if you can. I mean, don't really waste money buying a sample, but if you can try it and smell it, let me know what you think. Like, how does it smell to you? Because really, I, I'm i amazed if anyone wants to pay $300 a bottle for that. Personally, you know, I, I just don't smell it for me. Okay, so the last one is Obscure Oud. Okay, so this one has red berry, cardamom, clementine, kumquat effect, green mango, cloves, carnation, iris, concrete, frankincense, lily of the valley, apricot, fig leaf, patchouli, apopanax, resin, oud, amber, castorium, absolute, cedarwood, fig milk. Okay, well from the opening, it's, it's a very clean kind of fresh airy kind of fragrance, but there is a subtle synthetic smelling berry sweetness. I mean, it could be natural, but the way it comes across smells artificial. But there is a berry-like sweetness and this kind of generally fresh, clean thing that's very um, not describable in words. When you read that note breakdown, it does not color correlate. I guess you could say maybe there's a bit of a, a kumquat effect as they label it, because like I say, there is this kind of um, rubbery kind of artificial smelling sweetness there and really I mean god I think you get a tiny hint of the iris concrete um, so there you go there, there's a there's a an expensive natural you can smell I think you get a tiny hint of some iris I don't smell real oud there, there might be I'm not saying there definitely isn't real oud in here there probably is, but it's used in such a small amount that you can't smell it. The thing that annoyed me was that it's called Obscure Oud and they put the price up for this one quite a bit more than the others, presumably to justify the fact that it contains Oud, uh, so they bumped the price up. When you can't smell the Oud, then I don't think, why, why should you put the price up there? Because it's used in such a small amount that it doesn't really have an effect in the perfume. You know, the fact that it's called Obscure Oud, I think it's obscure because it's not really there, you can't smell it. It's completely hidden. You get this kind of vague rubbery sweetness. And really there's not a whole lot else there to describe. But the the sweetness of whatever the fruity things are, the, the berry and the kumquat effect, is kind of what you're kind of smelling with this rubbery, clean kind of thing that altogether doesn't smell that fascinating or interesting or that expensive or that um, good really. But I don't think it smells terrible. I'm not even saying that these fragrances smell bad. They're just not that good. Like, I'm just, they don't impress me. They don't wow me. They don't give me anything. These are very much mixed media. There is definitely synthetics and aldehydes and things that aren't natural in here. Personally, I don't think it's very fair to say that they use a high quantity of natural raw ingredients when it's clearly mixed media. 
and when you know the natural raw ingredients that are precious and expensive like oud is is not in a big enough quantity to even make an impact in the perfume you can't smell oud to me oud should not be in the name of this fragrance because you cannot smell it they don't list where the oud comes from is it cambodian oud vietnamese oud is it from Laos? is it from thailand is it from sri lanka is it from a oud farm what grade of oud is it? How old is it? How old was the tree? Was it artificially injected to induce resin? Bearing in mind that it's obviously a compound house, a compound company that creates the juice here. You know, the owner is is not a perfumer. She hired out Bertrand du Chiffour and another perfumer to, to make these for her. Then she obviously pays for the formula. Then she takes the formula to a compound house. A compound house will take that formula and create it on a large quantity for her and probably she won't bottle it either she'll get someone else to bottle it and then the whole process is just done for her that way so you are at the uh, mercy of the compound house to what naturals or what notes that they have so where do they get their oud from and here's the gray line just because it says oud on the bottle just because it says oud on the note breakdown by law it doesn't have to contain any real oud it could be it could be synthetic oud it could be an oud accord built up of natural notes but is not actually oud it could be from a mass producing farm that has thousands of oud trees that typically take young sapling trees and artificially inject them to induce the infection uh, so this tree is full of kind of goop and goo, artificial chemicals, basically to induce the process of creating the resin in the tree. And that oud is then taken far too soon. It's not mature. It's not an old tree. So the quality of the oud then becomes quite poor. It's not, you know, a, a quality oud and therefore shouldn't give a high price in the finished perfume because the oud is cheap. I'm not saying that is the case, but it's a very logical thing to, to take into consideration here. The most detail I can give on this fragrance is that it's vaguely kind of fruity sweet and there's really nothing else to describe. This is not done in a way that you have um, particularly top middle bass notes. It's not done in a way that you can identify the notes in the note breakdown. You can't smell this and pick out carnation and lily of the valley and fig leaf and apopinax and oud and castorium and cedarwood and fig milk and patchouli and clove and red berry and cardamom and clementine and kumquat and green mango. You can't smell those. You smell a generally, a generally a thing of a singular accord that smells slightly fruity, slightly sweet, kind of rubbery in tone, but very light, very soft, uh, very non-descriptive, not very interesting, and there's definitely no noticeable oud. I'm not saying it's completely not there, but it is a possibility that you know they don't actually have to by law have that contain oud it might not exist i'm not saying that's the case but it is a possibility to consider the fact is it's not done in a noticeable way that you can smell it so why is the price over 400 dollars a bottle what what is the logical reason for that price increase when it's not used in a quantity that's even detectable that's what you've got to ask yourself logically and what you've got to consider you know, if you're not bothered about money and you just like spending it, fine, doesn't matter. But if you want value for money and you don't want to be ripped off or conned, really think about what you're buying. Smell it and think to yourself, okay, this is called this is called an oud perfume. I can't smell any oud. It kind of smells vaguely kind of sweet. Nothing really else going on there. It's very soft, it's very light, and it's $400 a bottle make up your own mind there was one in there that i said you know if i made that i would be a bit embarrassed and i'd throw that away and start again i stand by that i mean i don't care if that sounds snobby i just genuinely think it, it smells really it doesn't smell like the thing is when you smell something you can usually tell when time and effort and care and, and love and passion has gone into something it comes across in the blend and I don't get that with these, it feels soulless. That's how it feels when I smell them. I don't feel soul, I don't I don't feel like much time or effort or care has been put into these smelling fantastic. And that is a very personal opinion, other people might very well disagree. I mean, you've got to take into consideration the perfumers that made these. They've made some great work in the past. You know, they're, they're considered 
really high up there as perfumers and when I smell them I just it feels disappointing my honest thought is none of them have personality none of them smell interesting or complex none of them have layers none of them have even notes that you can pick out singularly they're, they're kind of a blob of a, of a thing that smells of something and, and there you go and in a way I am surprised that other people do but you know fair enough obviously some people do like them and some people do get something from them if I was a world-renowned perfumer that had supposedly unlimited access to the world's most expensive raw natural materials to play with at my disposal to create some really high quality fragrances with that level of talent and access to such high quality materials if this was the best that I could come up with I would be mortified and embarrassed because uh, I, I really but the thing is I, do, I don't believe that's the case I don't believe this is the you know this is their best work this is the best they, they can come up with because it just isn't but my personal opinion is someone with such an expert nose and such a level of talent given such, such access to expensive raw materials there is no way that this is the best that someone could come up with given that level of expertise and knowledge absolutely impossible putting that into consideration i mean it really to me feels like the woman just did not have enough money to pay the perfumers what they wanted and they have basically picked out reject formulas from the bin that's how it comes across to me um, it just doesn't highlight any expensive notes it's mixed media they're not utilizing the expensive materials in there at all and they feel flat I, they're just not relevant in perfume these are just a waste of time to me even if at half the price as an indie brand this company would fail or really not go very far so when you put the cost into consideration I think really some people are just going to buy it just because it is expensive and they get deluded a little bit because they think high cost is high value and you kind of brainwash people because of the high price tag and people's opinions are then kind of influenced because of that. I think they're going to thinly skate on that and it's going to crack eventually. If your product isn't good, inherently good at the, at the core, your business is gonna fail. So let's be hypothetical for a second here. Let's put myself in the shoes of the woman that owns this brand. I am now the brand owner of Fuang Dang. Okay, so I've gone to the perfumers, I said, make me some perfumes, please. You've got unlimited natural materials, knock yourself out, please, here you go. If this is what they came back to me with, I said, here you go, I, I, I would smell them and be genuinely worried that for one my, my money is being wasted two that my customers money is going to be wasted three that they've not highlighted any of the expensive raw natural materials laid available to them uh, four this is the my main thing right as a brand owner in, you know looking at it this way i would not have the faith and the belief in my product to feel that this is going to be a, a successful venture i really wouldn't I, I would not trust that these were good enough i would not have belief in my own product i wouldn't release these to the marketplace because this isn't going to get a following of people to support me this isn't going to make an impact at all with it's not going to do anything you're going to get if you have really good marketing you're going to get an initial wave of hype because you're new and you've got good marketing. Uh, you're going to get a little bit of buzz. If your product is not good at the end of that, that's not going to be carried forward. Your business is going to fail. No one is going to support you in the long run. And that's it. You're screwed. Your, your business is over. And that's how I, that's the position I would feel as a brand owner with this brand is that I would feel like I was going to fail if I released these products because I know that they're not going to have an impact. I know they're not relevant and I know they're not good enough. And I would not have faith or belief that this would make me a living in the industry or do really anything apart from fail. 
that's my genuine belief. But I wanna finish the video emphasizing the point that it's okay to have different opinions. It's very much expected for people to have a different opinion. It's kind of strange when reviewers all have the exact same opinion on the fragrance. That would be weird. So, you know, expect people to have different opinions. Expect reviewers to, to not agree on things. If you smell them and you think they're fantastic and you think they're worth every penny, you know, you're on a winner. Don't listen to anybody else. But for me, all I can show is my judgment. Doesn't mean that someone else with a different one is wrong. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you again in the next one. Take care and bye-bye.